are with Christopher Lloyd. Now, this is a bit of a, a, a big moment for me because you were in so many of the, the best films of my childhood. Everybody knows you from, of course, Back to the Future. But you were also the main villain in Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Mm -hmm. Now, what was it like for you being half toon or uh, <laughs> kind of toon? It, it was. It was delicious. <laughs> it, it just, uh, you, you could be this, I mean, I, when I've watched cartoons and I see the villains when they're real done, I love it, you know. It's, and he, Josh Duber reminded me, there was that cartoon comic book of uh, like two crows. Yep. And they were always out smarting each other. Like well, Heckle like, and Jekyll, I think it was, the two crows? Uh, could be. Yeah. yeah I don't yeah. know what they were named, but mm. they, they had the you know sinister black hat and the long black robe or you know glasses. So th this was like having my childhood wish to be one of them. You know, so it worked out good. Did you grow up with cartoons? Were you uh, always a, a consumer of of cartoon entertainment or movies? Yeah, my, um, my my family subscribed to a, a magazine. Right which always had cartoons in it, and still does, the New Yorker magazine. And I, um, there was always a, there was frequently a Charles Adams cartoon, uh, still alive, or whatever, and they'd often have to be the Adams family, some one of the Adams family, and Uncle Fester was my total favorite. I, I just loved his kind of, mischievousness and weirdness, the way he looked. And then decades later, I get a call to be Uncle Fester. <laughs> I mean, what, what are the odds, you know? It's so, a, a wonderful thing. Yeah. And you did two of those films, yeah? The, the Adams yeah. Family. Mm -hmm. um, what was it that about, about Uncle Fester that you got to grow with? Because you can start a character, but then how, what do you feel like you got to turn him into or evolve him? Well, I, uh, I had, from the beginning, I had, I had to become him. You know, mm. I had, you know, various, so, okay, I've been watching, looking at this guy as a cartoon mm. with, no, with no other connection, and suddenly I'm going to do him, so now i got to make my first entrance being him. I don't have a, I don't have a chance to evolve. Mm -hmm. It's got to be there uh, instantly. And um, I, I was concerned about that. Yeah. There's another thing, because we had to work out the costume and the makeup and all that stuff mm. to give that visual. Yeah. You know, he's, he's kind of a visual joke, yeah. <laughs> the, the way he is. Thank you oh. so much for coming back. Oh, and, I appreciate it. And Thank we you. will keep having you as long as we can. Okay. Thank you so much, Christopher yeah. Lloyd. So, you're probably wondering what sort of things are there to do at Supernova? Well, I'm going to show you, and we're going to have a look at all the different parts of Supernova, from getting autographs, getting photographs, and even just, you know, how to survive on the day. Are you ready? Let's go and do it. So one of the things that you're probably going to want to do at Supernova is get an autograph or get a photograph. Now, there's a couple of ways that you can do that. First of all, you can purchase them online or on the day you can come here to the Supernova store and that's where you can buy your tokens that allow you to go and get your autograph or your photograph from these lovely people here. I'd like to buy an autograph of Jess Harnell, please. Fantastic. And I say, no worries, that'll be $40. That's okay. easy. Autographs are easy. All right. So I give you my money. There's my money. Yeah, I'll give you a, a token. A token. Don't lose it, we can't replace it, that's like cash. If you drop it, someone else can pick it up and use it, so... Okay, so I have to keep this one very safe? Very safe, yes. And if I want to get a photograph, is it the same thing? Uh, it's similar, but uh, you say I'd like a photograph with Jess, and, and I say, would you like to do that today or tomorrow? Because all the photographs are timed. While autographs can be done at any time, uh, the uh, stars are usually sitting there, unless they're in the photo booth on stage or having like a food break. Um, while the photo sessions are timed, and we have to get you a specific token for that session. Okay. Well, that sounds really complicated, but also not that bad. No, it's quite easy. Today or tomorrow? Uh, tomorrow, thank you. So I look up uh, what we've got for tomorrow, and I say we've got a session at 2.15. How does that suit you? That suits me perfectly. And then we do the same thing. I'll tell you it's uh, $40, and you give me your money, and I give you a token. I give you my money. There is my money. Thank you very much. I'm going to go and meet Jess Harnell now. You
Okay, so you've gone through the line and now you've gotten to the end and we are here with Jess Harnell. How are you doing? And you think it's going to be a roller coaster, but instead it's a guy from Whitesnake. How cool is that, dude? <laughs> Anyway, no, no, yeah, so here we are. We're at Supernova. It's outstanding. We're here in Sydney, and it's fantastic, man. Okay, so I have a token. What do I do now? How does this work? Do I give you the token? You give it to the guy on the bus, and you tell him what stop you want to get off at, and then you're, you're good. No, this is what happens. You walk up to the table where the celebrity or me because i'm not a celebrity is sitting right and they usually have a really lovely person like this this is kelly and she's here and she knows more about it than i do but what you do is you walk over to kelly i have all these pictures and stuff and cds and whatever else i got laying around and you give her your ticket and you say i would like one of these or this picture or this picture i have learned the hard way that if an attractive woman comes up and wants me to sign a blank check the answer is no but they're getting off topic so what they do is they give me the picture and she says you want your name on it if they want their name on it you write it down here because you people in australia spell your name some weird ways dude so she gives me it makes sure i can spell it right i write it to them they walk away they're happy i'm happy because i can buy some licorice with the money that they gave me for the picture so everybody wins man I'm here with John Levine. Thank you so much for joining me. Now, you're obviously best known for your work on Doctor Who, but I would love to learn a little bit more about you as a person. Were you into sci-fi before you got your role? No, I was not. In fact, the story, of course, is so long, we don't have time to tell the, the absolute truth, but <laughs> I was just an extra. I was a lonely boy in this, uh, I lived in Wiltshire down in Stonehenge. I came to London, never thinking my life would uh, end up as anything very special. And then I got a part as a Yeti and a Cyberman at £10 a day. Mm -hmm. And just by pure good luck, and I, I, I know it's God at the end of the day, but Douglas Campbell, one of the greatest directors ever, and his autobiography is out now, which is just beautiful. He watched me, and my work ethic has always been strong. And he said, you know, we've watched you. We've just had to sack one of the leading men. If you can speak dialogue, given that I've had no training, no theatre or anything, mm -hmm. I got the part, and it's so strange because now, 51 years later, here I am being interviewed by you in Sydney. The thing, the truth is, it's been an absolute and utter dream. Tell me, you didn't have any theatre training, any dialogue training you mentioned. Did you do anything before you got into acting? No, I was a menswear salesman and an auto electrician. Well, that's something. Isn't that's that something? Well, yeah, but a menswear salesman, that's where I got the jacket, you see. <laughs> I got it very cheap, and that's Excellent. how long ago. 50 just... years ago? Yes. Excellent. Excellent. Now, tell me, was there any work that went into researching for a role in a sci-fi uh, series, considering that you'd never really been into sci-fi before? Well, good question, Beck. What I did is I followed the pros. If you watch, I mean, the stars of our show, John Pertwee in particular, um, he latched onto me quite quickly because he knew I had, um, I, had he wa I had what he called a butterfly soul. People like me can be broken very easily, whilst I appear very confident and very you know, good in front of the camera. I can have my heart broken very easily. And they call it butterfly souls. Mm -hmm. And if it hadn't been for John standing next to me and standing up for me and making me half the man I am today. And then of course I got my confidence. And then I suddenly realized I was quite a good actor. <laughs> and I realized that I had over 5 million fans. And it's, it's very, it's humbling when you actually, if you actually think about it, all these people's hearts come out mm -hmm. to you. And it is our job and our duty to respond to that. And I've always said this, you know, until thine own self be true and just love the people you're working with. Oh, is there anything in particular that you want to do while you're in Australia because you don't get to come here very often? Well, I'm going to be riding a camel in Perth. <laughs> riding a camel? That's the name of a book, isn't it? I rode a camel in Perth. <laughs> Uh, I don't know what they're going to do, but evidently we're going to be riding camels. And I've always wanted to do that. And do you know what you call a camel with three humps? Humphrey. Oh. <laughs> a little English joke there, ladies and gentlemen. I, I really appreciated that one. Thank you so much.